I got the idea for this project when making and modding a guitar effect pedal circuit. I was trying out the different resistor values in the tone stack. It'd be convenient if you could dial up a known resistance, but avoid the hassle of using a potentiometer. Manually changing the resistors I found was error prone and pretty tedious. A decade resistance box would be ideal for this. However, looking through equipment online catalogues, a decade resistance box is way too expensive just for modding an effect pedal. These have much more resolution and accuracy than needed simply for this, so I need to look for a cheaper option. This reminded me about some cheap thumb wheel switches I saw on eBay a while ago, but didn't have a use for them at the time. Each thumb wheel is basically a 10-way switch that can be wired up to cascade sequentially, so you could have a number of the same value resistors that would produce a serially increasing value and each thumb wheel or decade can then be ganged together, giving the poor man's DIY decade resistance box. 1% tolerance resistor packs are cheap, so a DIY decade resistance box for less than $10 in parts and a few hours work is totally achievable, as I'll detail in the following. The next section demonstrates the build but for those of you who like written instructions and for file downloads, these are available at my website www.fads2obsessions.com. Before getting into the physical build, some background about design choices I made based on typical commercial units which usually have one ohm resolution. Having one ohm resolution is not that useful for testing guitar effect pedal circuits or other likely uses I'll have for this. Similarly, don't need values greater than a mega ohm. So with five decades, from tens through to hundred thousandths ohms, we'll give 10 ohm resolution up to one mega ohm in a nice compact unit. And also can make two decade resistance boxes as the thumb wheels from eBay are sold in packs of 10. Since I have a 3D printer, I made a custom enclosure using Fusion 360 for the design. It is print in place without support material and I use PLA filament. The enclosure has a removable click in place lid. The thumb wheel switches come with face plates with locking tabs, so once inserted into the enclosure, lock into place without the need for fasteners or glue. The STL files are on my website for those interested. Three D printing the custom enclosure is convenient and also inexpensive. Of course you are free to use any alternative you have suitable. Although I have to say, the i3 Mega with the Ultra Base makes 3D printing very easy. For the actual circuitry, the idea is for each thumb wheel switch, take 9 of the same value resistor, 10 ohm for example, and then individually connect switch position 0 to 1 with a resistor, position 1 to 2 with another resistor, and so on sequentially. This produces a single decade. Repeat with 100 ohm resistors on another thumb wheel, and with increasing resistor value, continue for the desired number of decades. So after soldering the necessary resistors to the thumb wheel switches, you should end up with a single decade that looks like this. The wires are temporary to enable testing of the decade, tens of ohms in this case, before moving on to the next unit. Now with all the resistors soldered to the various thumb wheel switches finished, with each thumb wheel forming an individual decade of the overall resistance box, five in my case, now comes the part of ganging them together to form a completed project. This simply involves joining the common of the lower value thumb wheel decade, the pin labelled C, to the zero pin of the next higher value decade thumb wheel. I used short pieces cut from the resistor leads as jumper wire between thumb wheels to be ganged together. This keeps the unit neat and tidy and also perhaps helps with minimising introducing an offset bias in the resistance. The next step is to add the face plates, which also contain the locking tabs. Nearly finished. 
Now just have to insert the thumb wheel switch units into the enclosure. Nice tight fit with the 3D printed part. A little bit of clean up. And all done. Finally completed with clicking the lid into place. Well that completes the construction. Testing with a DMM gives good results with 1% tolerance as expected from the resistors I used. Since using multiple of the same resistor values I thought there may be the potential for better than 1% as random error in the resistor values would tend to cancel out. However this thought is likely incorrect and there is a discussion about this on the EEV blog I've given the link in the description. The EEV blog also shows that there is nothing new under the sun as the saying goes as others have done similar projects in the past and for those interested there are tips for using SMD resistors instead of through hole and for having higher wattage. Hope you found this interesting and useful and if you did please thumbs up and subscribe.